All right, guys, how did Ja Morant get his bounce? You guys have asked me to react to this for a while. So the video is how a bag of chips and a tractor tire helped Ja Morant become an NBA lottery pick. Seems like a reach to me, but uh, let's find out what he was doing. Since I put a ball in my hand, like you rarely could take it, take the ball out. I'm dribbling the ball through the house. Big keys. Uh, my dad even had to get a little basketball goal to put on <laughs> the living room door. Big keys. He'd be like, Dad, you, you feel like working me? First of all, the best ball handlers are not built through drills. They're built through living your life with the basketball in your hands. I'm dribbling through the house. My mom's getting mad at me because I'm dribbling through the house. Okay, I'm going outside on the sidewalk. I'm in the garage. I'm going around things. You live your life with the ball in your hands, and the ball becomes an extension of your hand. Um, I'm all for drills, and believe me, I've put in my 10,000 hours with ball handling drills, but I attribute the handles that I've developed to living the life with the ball in the hand. Um, there, there is no, uh, there's nothing that can replicate that. There's no amount of structured drills that can replicate that. You live your life with the ball in your hands. You play a lot of basketball. You get in-game reps. That's how you get handles. So uh, claim number one, I'm with that. That's where he got his handles yeah. from. So that's I'm with that. Me like, all right, let's go. Oh, that's a dope and setup. So in 2009, when Ja was 10 years old, he got the old, full court in the backyard. Built a basketball court in their backyard That's so to train his son. Ja would get on Facebook and be like, We got a hoop session in my backyard at this time. Love it. Pop Kids aren't doing that. Take it, take it upon yourself to, uh, hey, go recruit bodies, go recruit people to play against. You got to play. And he's playing out here on concrete. And guess what? He's not getting hurt because our body adapts. Um, as long as you uh, dose it the right way and you gradually kind of ramp up. And uh, it's okay to play outside, guys. It's You don't have to play in the nice, fancy gym all the time. You know, go play on concrete. Like 50 to 60 people out there just playing. 50 yeah, to 60 people out there. The grill for everybody who come out. Getting his post-workout protein. We love it. it. Left-hand floaters. We love it. Coordinated. As a high school freshman, just stood Small. Just five, foot seven. five foot seven as a freshman. Guys, there's hope. There's hope. There's not hope for me because I'm still 5'9", so I'm still waiting on my growth spurt. There's not hope for me. There, If you're listening, there might still be some hope for you. Um, some people hit their growth spurt late. Freshman year is a weird time. Sometimes Sophomore year, sometimes even junior year, it's a weird time because you got your grown men who grew in the seventh grade and they already had their full grown beards and their mustache. Um, and then you got your little kids. John Morant is a kid. I was a kid until I was like, you know, sophomore, junior in high school. Um, so it, it's a weird time. And that's why rankings at this age is, is so stupid because the, the cards are reshuffled once everybody hits puberty. So when you're looking at these middle school rankings and these early high school rankings, your top 10, it's all the, the full grown kids. It's all the full, full grown men who already hit puberty. And then the rest, like they get discouraged. But the truth is if they keep at their game and when you're small, you develop some stuff and then you grow late, like a CJ McCollum, man, uh, uh, Anthony Davis, you know, you grow late. Uh, now you still got that bag and you got these little tricks that, that, uh, allowed you to survive as a little person. And then you get that adequate height. Now you're dangerous. So it's not a bad thing if you're small early on. His, and, and there's no tricks to growing. You uh, eat enough nutrients. You sleep enough. Um, exercise is great for growth hormone. Uh, but look, there, there's really no secret. Uh, there's a lot that you can do to ruin your growth. There's not a lot that you can do to help your growth. So it, it really comes down to your genetics um, and, and, and not having nutritional deficiencies and not being deficient in sleep. So like if you're getting your around eight hours and you're getting your protein, your carbohydrates, your fat, and all of your micronutrients, you're eating your vegetables and, and your fruits, um, you're probably going to reach your growth potential. Um, but yeah, there's not, there's no secret tricks. So I know I've, I searched day and night on the internet. How do you, do you stretch your body out? Like, what do you know? And because that might stretch your muscles out a little bit, but it's not going to change your bone structure. Um, so just eat well, sleep well, and hope for the best. You know, and don't rely on it, man. Go out and get good. And if, if the growth spur hits later, great. If it doesn't, hey, I'm nice anyways, because I'm not relying on the height. He wasn't dunking. 
So that's when I got the, the big track to tie in the backyard. So mm. after every drill, I had him jumping on it 25 times. And then after that. After every drill, jumping 25 times. The bounce got crazy. The bounce got crazy after that. So um, not that it's bad. That's not bad. Uh, so typically in strength and condition, we talk about high rep plyometrics being bad. It's not that it's bad. This is an area that uh, hasn't been interpreted well from the Russian literature from Verko Shansky and the kind of the godfathers of, of plyometrics. Um, what they were talking about, and this has been known for a really long time, and this is missed by the average trainer, right? A lot of people go, well, high repetition plyos is really bad. We would never want to do that. Um, but what's bad is high rep intensive plyos. So if you're doing like, you know, high box depth jumps and you're doing single leg repeat maximal jumps and anything that's really intense. Yeah. We want to keep that low repetition. We don't want fatigue to be a factor there. If anything, that's going to probably cause us more harm. But what has not been interpreted well from that Russian literature is extensive plyos should be high repetition. And they break this down very clearly when you read books like Super Training. It's very clear that uh, a big part of successful training is that extensive plyometrics, which means higher volume, higher repetition. This is your jump rope type work. This is your low hurdle type work. Uh, this is your low level bounds. I'm going 50% on bounds and I can go for 50 yards, hundred yards. And so this is where ground contacts are high, but we're not going all out, not super intense. And this is good for building some spring in the tendons, building some spring in the Achilles, building those co-contractor muscles, right? When we talk about before your foot lands, we're bracing for impact so that the joint doesn't take all of the force and it's well distributed throughout the muscles. And, um, that's kind of your, that it's one of the biggest factors for injury prevention. And that can be developed through extensive plyos. We're getting a lot of reps. And so this, I would consider it extensive plyos. Now they're doing depth jumps, which would be in that intensive category, but it's kind of on a small tire. So I don't know. I'm not, I'm not mad at what they're doing now. Uh, did that cause his bounce? So this is an area where it gets a little bit tricky because a lot of kids look at that and they go, oh, that's the key. The real key was probably this. He was at a certain point in his life where either way he was going to make a transformation. He was going from a little kid to a grown man. And when you grow up, your hormones just change and your muscles change and your tendons change naturally. This is a question that I ask to everybody with bounce that I know. Uh, when did you have that transformation and what did you do? And the answer is always different. And uh, so two scenarios, one is one of the highest jumping power forwards right now in the league. Another is a small forward who's probably one of the highest jumpers of all time in the league. Small forwards, when I asked that question, what did you do? He said, well, it was around that time when I was about 15, 16. So in my mind, I'm already like, mm, you're probably hitting puberty. So things are probably going to change anyways. He said, yeah, I just wore ankle weights. That's it. I just wore ankle weights to class. When I was jumping, when I was playing, I just wore ankle weights and then I had bounce. Um, and so for most people, that's just going to lead to a lot of knee pain, right? That traction on the knee, you, pr you probably don't want that. Um, another person, the, the power forward said, yeah, man, I was, you know, around 16. Again, in my mind, mm, you probably just hit puberty. You probably just grew up and became a man. Um, and it's in the genetics to have the bounce, but you had to go through puberty to, to get the bounce. Um, and, and so already in my mind, I'm thinking that, but he says, man, I just start, I trained in the sand. I just trained in the sand for one month and then I came back the next season with crazy bounce, right? So again, like, uh, oh, another one. And I've heard this one for growing tall as well. I just ate a bunch of cereal. I heard one person say that for bounce. I heard another person say that recently. One of our uh, seven foot NBA players, he said, yeah, man, I ate a ton of cereal. And he believed that that's what actually made the difference. Um, so yeah, a lot of times people make that mistake where, you're just transforming your body because of where you're at in your development cycle. And whatever you did during that summer, people attribute the success to that. Um, and then, it'd be, it, it, which is fine. I don't care. It's just a problem when you start talking about, okay, that's why. And then a lot of kids who don't know any better, are like, oh, that's what I got to do. I got to train in the sand while wearing ankle weights, while eating cinnamon toast crunch, while jumping on the tire 25 times after every drill. All right. And we progress. In the summer of 2014, 
14 year old Ja took his game above the rim while playing AAU. Ooh, bouncy. Ja's bouncy, man. Ja's an athlete. I love Ja's athleticism. Straight athlete. And his teammate. Oh, he's playing with Zion. Zion Williams. So two of the best athletes. But it was one tournament where the in the Jaws NBA. Above I think Ja averaged like 33, 35 that tournament. I was like, yo, like, buddy can hoop. Like. <laughs> All right, so we, we understand the tractor tire. What about the chips? What does the chips have so to do with this whole thing? Like, okay, just get me four years somewhere at somebody college. Yeah, unrecruited. Nobody recognized me at all. Listen, if you're not recruited, keep going. Keep going, keep going. So I have the opposite story. John Morant uh, was, was, was good and um, not recruited. I was good and I was recruited like my sophomore year. I started getting really big looks and then junior year broke a wrist, senior year broke a hand. And so my offer started to fall off and then I had to go to community college and then I got hurt there and um, just bone break after bone break, random things, all not connected, which for me, it was my nutrition. I had a vitamin D deficiency because I lived in the gym and I was never out in the sun and I didn't know any better. Um, so I lifted weights. I did the things that I felt like made sense for injury prevention, but I was missing one thing. Get out in the sun um, and more importantly, go get a blood test because you might be deficient in one nutrient and it can cause problems. So be very self-aware with what you're lacking um, because that makes a huge difference. So I just want to say me and Ja opposite stories i was just worried about the colleges and other people thinking like am i good enough before his senior year ja barely six foot and only 150 pounds dang he was attends small a two-day tournament in the hopes of finally being noticed he I was small to the camp late. Yeah, what is he like, now he's probably six two He's still name. small. Like, Jaw is thin. I don't think people understand. Ja is not big. He's he's still small, but he's just so athletic, sees the game so well. He's so skilled. It just it just doesn't matter. Oh, so I went to the back gym. James Kane from Murray State mm, University. We're going to learn about the chips. The Why are the gym? chips important? He got hungry. He got hungry. He's directed down a hallway to a concession stand. Go that way. I ordered some Doritos and Doritos and are good, soda. man. Doritos, that's my chip of choice, by the way. If I go to Subway, I'm gonna put Doritos in the chips. And uh, that that makes no sense. That makes no sense. I'm gonna put Doritos in the sandwich. I'm gonna get my sandwich and I'm gonna stuff the Doritos inside and I'm gonna make it extra crunchy. That's what I'll do. Cause Doritos are good. And that's my favorite chip. And Jaw got Doritos too, and it got him recruited. You see what Doritos do? They get people recruited. Man, Doritos are great. I was able to hear the balls bouncing in the auxiliary so good. gym. <laughs> Ended up peeking his head in the gym and was watching for a couple minutes. Um, I guess that's when he seen he me. He was watching him eating Doritos. Watching ja. He said, dang, he the way he eats those Doritos, man, I got, I got to get, I got to recruit him. He said, you got to come up here and see this kid. We immediately got to, to Spartanburg the next day, and I was just blown Murray away. State. Uh, Shout out Murray State for finding people. Like, game. These coaches don't get enough credit for finding these people. Like you got all these huge recruiters, your 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 big, you know, top five school, whatever, like your huge high major D ones missing. You're missing a kid like this. You don't see it. You don't got the eye. And you got Murray State who's like, yo, you are special. And then they developed the talent. Weber with Dame and CJ, uh, where'd he go? Mm, I can't remember the name. Uh, but he went somewhere small too. The, uh, these coaches need their credit, man. They're changing the culture of basketball. You're developing these top NBA players, and you had the eye, man. Give these people their credit. On September 2nd, 2016, John Morant committed to play D1 college basketball at Murray State. Yes, sir. That's all we need. We need one look. We need one look. Let me and bang that off the glass. To the NCAA Ooh. Tournament his freshman year, ja, he's flexing. He don't care that he, two, he don't care how big he's flexing. Captain heading into his sophomore year. Yep. Over the summer, I was starting to hear that he's not just a good player. He's really good. He had Alabama early on their schedule. Let's see what he's like when he goes. Shout out to Jay. Jay's dope. Mm. In November, Ja put on a show in Tuscaloosa. He's Knocking so cold. Points. Hey. 
Nine rebounds. And if you, if you Five. comment, you say, but he's got to watch out for those landings. Stop. You haven't watched enough of my videos. We need a counterbalance. If I'm that high in the air and I'm reaching for something, I need a counterbalance. If I tried to land on two feet in a lot of these scenarios, I would literally fall on my back and it would hurt bad. So therefore we kick one leg. So if I'm dunking, I'm going to kick my right leg up, which inevitably leads to a one leg landing. You're going to land on your left. We want to get that right down as fast as possible. One, two. Okay. I don't want to stick on one leg. Um, that, that is something that's somewhat of a bad landing. That's putting us at higher risk for injury. But if we're getting that second foot down fast, which Jaw is doing on all of his landings, that's good. Sometimes he just bails out. He just falls and that's good. There's times where uh, you need to be a parkour athlete, right? You don't see people looking at a parkour athlete when they jump off a building and then they land and they roll. You don't see people like, oh, it's a bad landing because you fell. But then people do it in basketball. They, they dunk and then they like come down and they're like, yeah, I'm not going to try to hit. I'm not going to try to stick this on one leg. And they kind of just push off and they roll or they do like a stumble landing. They stumble off. People look at that and they go, that's a bad landing. You got to stop, man. It's not a bad landing. These positions are inevitable. How good can we get at these positions? You don't run from the stress. You confront the stress. We train for it. And I don't know if Jaw specifically trained for it, but he jumps, he dunks, he gets reps. He's a basketball player. Mm. See, he bailed out. He just fell. That's fine. That's fine. There's some times where it makes more sense to fall than than to land. Like wow, it was at the time where after that game it was just different. After that game it was just different. Bounce. It became what did Jod do? Oh, he put up ridiculous numbers, and it was the way he did it. Yeah. Along the way. Yeah, because that that's so I when when I started watching him at Murray State, I saw the athleticism. And I'm like, okay, he's he's obviously special. But then I started seeing his passing ability. He can see the floor, man. He sees things a step ahead. He sees um, more frames per second than the average player. That's the difference maker right there. Because it's cool to have a fast body, but when you got a fast brain, you're a problem, man. When you got a fast brain, you're different. His teammate. Tyus Jones, who I've worked with a lot, one of the fastest brains you'll ever see. Um, his body might, you could consider that average speed for a six footer. He's only six foot, six one. You could consider Tyus's body average speed, but his brain is so fast that he anticipates, he sees things one step ahead. Therefore, on the court, you're like, dang, that guy's quick. Um, defensively, he, he's, you know, unbelievable at getting steals, getting deflections. Um, you talk about how to not be a defensive liability at six foot. Well, you got to have a fast brain. You got to, you got to be in, be in positions, um, before anybody else would get there. Led the nation in assists and averaged over 24 points a game. 24 points a game leading the nation. I mean, come on. NCAA tournament. It's another March one leg landing. We like it. Which fine. With the nation watching, pass. Morant led 12 seed Murray State. Yep. Against the he's a dog seed. too. That's what I love. So he he's got an interesting release. Uh, he's got a low set point, which is good. I mean, the guy most of the guys with range, the Trey Youngs, the Stephs, the Dames have a relatively low set point. Jaws set point is pretty low. Be interesting to see his mid range. I haven't studied his mid range much. So most people would have that low set point from deep, but then when they get in the lane, especially with his athleticism, they wouldn't keep it as low. They would raise above their head. It'd be more of a two motion shot from that 15, 17, 18 foot range, but behind three, they would get to that um, low set point, more of a push shot. Scalpel in each hand, cutting them up. Hey. 17 points, 16 assists. 11 rebounds it was just as dominant a performance as you're ever going to see in an ncaa tournament setting yep the undersized unknown kid yeah household name yep 12 days later talking with my family i just hey you gotta go that i would be declaring for the 2019 nba draft you gotta go i want to really give me the opportunity to play here at merge we may not taking the same road but 
I know it's gonna be emotional. It's dope, My man. Family. Still working out in the yeah, yard. We love that. To get to this you, point. you guys know we do a lot of yard work. We might do the most yard work. My name get called, I walk All of our work is yard work. Whichever team draft me, shake the commissioner hand. You put in the yard work. It's gonna be crazy. And that's why he is John Morant. The yard work. Um, so yeah, that's a wrap. Hit me with a thumbs up. Hit me with a comment. Let me know what you want me to react to. Uh, I'm not going to do a bunch of opinions on trainers and that kind of stuff. I want to respond to stuff like this that you guys are curious about. You know, is the tractor workout something I should be doing? Stuff like that I would like to react to and give my take. Until next time, I'm out.